first comic coming to the stage, one of the hardest working comics in New York City, young guy, and I think you're going to like him. Please welcome Mark Norman, everybody. Mark! Thank you, Ricky. Good old Ricky. Known for a long time. He's really grown into quite a man there. That sounded a little gay, didn't it? A little gay. He was talking about meeting women, all that stuff. Uh, I'm still having trouble in that department. Uh, never really been good with the whole sexual thing. Uh, I was pretty much a dumb kid. Was anyone else disappointed when they found out what abstinence meant? I remember being a kid, sitting in sex ed class. The teacher was like, you can't have sex, you'll get a disease, you'll get a girl pregnant, but there is an alternative. I'm like, Jesus, thank God we have an alternative. We have something. There is an alternative. We have something. And she's like, abstinence. And I'm like, what is abstinence? What is that? What is it? Sounds kind of hot. What is that? What, is that? what? What? Not doing it at all? This is the alternative? How is that an alternative? This is... Decaf is an alternative. <laughs> Margarine is an alternative. You know, I've never been to a diner and been like, eh, on this toast, I don't really want any butter. Do you have a butter alternative? They never say yes, nothing. <laughs> this is not an alternative. When I listen to an alternative rock station, it's not silence. <laughs> it's different kinds of rock. <laughs> but you know, a few years later I discovered Masturbation. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is an alternative. <laughs> the only problem is, give me an alternative to everything. Friends, real girls, the filling bowls. Now you know. That's how they get you. You know what I'm talking about. All right, all right, all right. All right. What are we doing with our lives? Huh? What are we doing? Ah, boy. Oh, boy, guys, I got the old day job, got the day job, uh, the recession hasn't gotten me yet. I hate the day job, hate it! To me, the worst part is getting up at the crack of dawn, I hate waking up early. I hit that snooze button like eight times. I love the snooze button. I think about the snooze button. Do you think the guy who pitched the idea of the snooze button was late to the meeting? <laughs> Jesus, Johnson, you're 20 minutes late. Well, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Don't I look well rested? I'm gonna change the world. Change the world. Guys, I got a I got a weird pet peeve. I think people use the phrase, I don't fuck around, a little too loosely. A friend of mine went down to the corner store, he came back up, he was unloading the bags, and I was like, ah, wheat thins. And he goes, yeah, I don't fuck around. <laughs> You bought wheat thins. <laughs> I don't fuck around is a line for a guy who brings a gun to a knife fight. <laughs> you bought crackers. <laughs> I think you're fucking around. <laughs> phrase too, it's like a tough guy phrase. Everybody's so quick to say that, I don't fuck around, I don't fuck around. I say let's fuck around, we should be fucking around more. We're fucking around right now, we're having a great time. Next time somebody says, I don't fuck around, say, well you should. <laughs> Come on, you look stressed, loosen up. Take a load off. This is why you're getting the night fights. <laughs> I don't fuck around. Alright guys, I love doing comedy. I get you into some weird situations though. I did, a, I did a show out in Philly not too long ago. Show was great, but it ran late, and I missed the last train back to New York. So I had to sleep at the station, which was really scary. And I'm laying on a bench, and a cop walks by me, and I swear to God he says this. Keep your guard up. <laughs> and keeps walking. <laughs> What the? Keep, 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 my, keep your guard up. You're guarding this place. You're the guard. I should be telling you that. Keep your guard up, officer. Will do. That's how that should go down. Keep my guard up. You know, it's a cop's job to prevent crime, not warn us of it. You know, we can't have cops walking around like, watch out, he's got a gun. I'll be in my car. Come on. Keep your guard up. That's great advice. And you know if I did get mugged, you know the cop would just be like, what did I tell you? Come on! <laughs> Civilians, huh? 
They don't listen. Oh boy, I uh, I live out in the East Village, so this wasn't a far far trek for me. Love the East Village, great place to live. It's a little saucy at night though. I uh, was walking down with my roommate, and a prostitute approached me and my roommate. She was very trashy, very sleazy, smoking a cigarette, blowing the smoke in our face, and she goes, hey, you boys wanna have some fun with me for cheap? And I was like, no, we're okay, and she walked away. And as a joke, I turned to my friend and I was like, would you? And he goes, no, she smoked. <laughs> ah, is that what got you? <laughs> Jeez, I didn't notice the nasty habit over the whoring. <laughs> the prostituting is what got me. Come on, I know you don't like girls who smoke, man, but your turnoffs are a little askew. A little out of whack, you know? That's like saying, I would never fuck a kid. With braces. <laughs> Crooked teeth on a kid, gross. Straight teeth, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. Oh boy, guys, I've been out trying to get a little healthier. I uh, started drinking the old soy milk. Started drinking the old soy milk because they say it's better for you. Yeah, I think if that's the case, on the carton, they should put pictures of kids we found. <laughs> I'm gonna take it easy, my friends here. Um, I mentioned I live in the East Village. It's a Chinese place. I love to go in my neighborhood. I love Chinese food. It's one of my favorites. I love Chinese food. I love it because you get such a big portion. You always have leftovers. I love leftovers. It's amazing how excited I get from that white box in the fridge. So, I'm thinking about starting a restaurant called Leftover. We'll serve everything in styrofoam. About a half portion. We'll serve it cold. There'll be a microwave at the table. Some boxes will serve empty. Hey, where the my food? Your roommate ate it. <laughs> What, I wrote my name on it, I wrote do not eat. Well, he's a dick. <laughs> Thanks for eating it, leftovers. Speaking of the Chinese, I got into quite an argument with my roommate the other day because apparently I've been using a racial slur that I didn't know was a racial slur. And I feel bad about this. I don't want to be throwing slurs around, but I didn't know. But in my defense, can we all agree that the gentlest of the racial slurs has got to be Chinaman? I know it has a negative connotation, I know, but he's from China, he's a man, not so bad. Chinaman's got nothing on the N-word, is what I'm saying here. To me, I think the names of Chinese restaurants sound a lot more like racial slurs. Let's try some. You know who can't drive? Those fucking panda kings. I'm you that right now. They cannot drive at all, and they stink. If I gotta ride on the train, one more Bamboo Express, I'm out of this town. Well, they make me sick, and listen to this, listen to this. One of those golden noodles just moved to my apartment building. Oh yeah, moved in right next door to me. They're one big happy family. Those guys really burn me up, those lucky dragons. Fun joke. I did that joke in D.C. and this Asian guy came up to me after and he was like, hey, hey, I would take it easy with that joke. <laughs> you know, Chinese people, they don't fuck around. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. I'm Mark Hogan. Give it up for Ricky, everybody. Mark Norman, everyone. <laughs>